5G introduces a ton of more bandwidth to really quench our thirst for data. But how much more are we really talking about here? And let's be honest, what are we going to use it for? Five G is the fifth generation of mobile cellular technology, and it builds on previous generations by introducing new innovations that make mobile networks more scalable, flexible, and reliable. Five G specifically introduces three key services, which really address different shortcomings of previous generations. Enhanced Mobile Broadband, EMBB, Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communication, URLLC, and Massive Machine Type Communications, MMTC. But the one that most readily impacts consumers is Enhanced Mobile Broadband. Mobile Broadband was practically introduced in 3G. But let's be honest, it was 4G that put high bandwidth mobile applications on the map. To understand how bandwidth works in mobile networking, we need to understand a bit about Spectrum. And if you'd like to learn more, definitely check out my video on Spectrum. Spectrum is a collection of frequency bands that are used for sending and receiving signals over the air. In our case, we're talking ones and zeros. Without getting too much into it, there are some limitations on how many bits per second of bandwidth we can stuff into one hertz of frequency. New air interface technologies allow us to make the air interface more efficient. And this is really what defines each mobile generation. As we've shifted through 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G, the air interface has changed, providing better spectral efficiency, meaning we can get more bandwidth out of, say, a 5 megahertz chunk of spectrum with each new generation. Peak spectral efficiency for 3G is about 2.6, meaning for every hertz of spectrum, we can send 2.6 bits per second. For 4G, and I mean real 4G, not LTE, that goes up to about 15, or an increase of six times, and in 5G, that doubles again to a whopping 30 bits per second for every hertz of spectrum. Regulators assign spectrum to operators in fixed blocks, and it's expensive. We're talking billions of dollars. So operators need to decide how to make the best use of the spectrum. The obvious choice would be to use 5G in all bands, but operators still have a legacy of 4G, 3G, and even 2G users. Also, some spectrum bands can only be used for specific technologies. 4G has more band options than 3G, and it's more flexible. 5G again adds more bands and is even more flexible than 4G. Also, 5G introduces high bands like millimeter wave, which offer huge chunks of spectrum. Where lower spectrum is assigned in chunks of 5 to 10 megahertz, and mid-band typically 20 to 60 megahertz, millimeter wave bands can be assigned in chunks of 50 to 400 megahertz. Seems pretty obvious that we should use that, right? Not really. As frequency increases, the distance a signal can travel decreases, meaning higher frequencies result in smaller coverage areas. Just like a subwoofer in a car, low frequency penetrates really well and can cover significantly larger areas. In practice, operators need to balance their spectrum across multiple mobile generations, as well as combining low, mid, and high frequency bands to match capacity and coverage with demand. Put all this together, and the standards bodies that define mobile generations have given a target for 5G enhanced mobile broadband of 10 gigabits per second peak upstream data rate, 20 gigabits per second peak downstream data rate, and 100 megabits per second whenever needed. If we just look at consumer services, that means people like us watching YouTube on our phones, more bandwidth means faster file transfers, more offloading into the cloud, much greater upload speeds for content producers, and higher resolution media like 4K, 8K, and even 3D. More interesting than just consumer mobile services, this extra bandwidth introduces new use cases like fixed wireless access. Essentially, with bandwidth speeds approaching those of fiber, operators can reliably offer 100 megabits per second services or more to a home or business as an alternative to fixed broadband. This allows mobile operators to access a whole new market and compete directly with fixed operators. Another opportunity for operators is to use 5G as a backhaul technology. 
Combined with solar power, this means a base station can provide mobile coverage in a completely remote area with no grid power, no optical fiber, and not even direct line of sight to another cell tower, something that microwave does require. With better spectral efficiency and more frequency bands available for use, the total bandwidth available for 5G services is significantly bigger than any previous generation. And that's critical because one of the cornerstones of 5G is that it will allow operators to transform their businesses beyond consumer services and offer reliable, flexible services that address the needs of vertical industries like manufacturing, healthcare, transportation, agriculture, and more. And for many industries, this will be where their digital journey starts. Thanks for watching. We've got so much extra bandwidth right now, I put a Google Chromecast in our bathroom.